Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we'll start uh, topic 1.7, which is about the energy, work, and power. First, the learning objective. These are the learning objective of this topic that you should uh, understand the concept of energy and different forms of energies as well as conservation of energy. So first, the concept of energy, how we define energy. Energy simply means ability to do work. Example, if an object is placed on the horizontal surface and I'm applying force on the object so that this object can move from one place to another. So I apply the force on the object and the object move from position A to position B. So when we are applying force and we can move the object, so what we do we, or what we say, we say we did a work done or a work is done. So ability to do work, if anything is able to do work, if anything is able to exert force and move the object to certain distance, we say that thing is having energy. So simple definition of energy, it is ability to do work. So example, if there's an object and I'm applying force, like example, this is a wall and I'm applying force on the wall. And the wall does not move. So if I'm applying force on the wall and the wall does not move, is there any work done? There is no work done because I'm applying force, but I'm not able to move this object. So here the work done is zero. So it means I don't, ha I have energy, but I don't have sufficient energy to do the work. So sometimes we have energy, but we don't have sufficient energy to do the work. So in this case, the work done is zero. So simple definition of a work, uh, simple definition of energy is ability to do work. So if you are able to do work, means we have energy, sufficient energy. If you are not able to do work, we don't have sufficient energy. So everything in the world is able to do work because of energy. And energy is basically a capacity of doing work or we can say the ability of doing work. And what is the main source of energy? Different energies are there, but what is the main source? The main source of energy is the sun. Like most of the energy, when we discuss the types of energy, the most of the energy is started with the sun. So sun is refers to a main source of energy. And the unit of energy, what is the unit of energy? Unit of energy is joule or you can also write kilojoule. And what is the relation between joule and kilojoule? That one kilojoule is equals to 1000 joules. Is it clear the concept of energy? Energy is simply the ability to do work. If you are able to do work, it means you have energy. Then there are different forms of energies. So energy have different forms. It can be a chemical energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, light energy, sound energy, thermal energy, solar energy or internal energy or heat energy, electrical energy, nuclear energy, wind energy and strain energy or elastic strain energy. So these are 
different forms of energies. You just have to know the basic idea of each form of energy. You don't have to learn the formulas except two of them, which you will learn the formula. You will learn the formula for kinetic and potential. So now we'll discuss each form of energy. First thing, chemical energy. So what is the chemical energy? Energy which is a stored energy and it can be released by a chemical reaction. So example, the food or the fuel, they all have chemical energy. Like batteries also having cells, batteries, they all have chemical energy. So what is the concept of the chemical energy? The energy which can be released by a chemical reaction. Like example, you have one kilogram coal. So you have one kg coal. If you want to release energy, like example, if you want to cook food or if you want to uh, make barbecue or you want to produce heat, what you do, how you release the energy from the coal so what we do, how we release energy from the coal, we burn. So when we burn the coal, it releases energy. But basically what is burning? When we burn the fuel, burn the coal, it releases energy. What is burning? Burning is a chemical reaction. So when we release energy from anything by a chemical reaction, what we call, we call that energy as the chemical, we say that the object was having a chemical energy. Same way, the batteries, the cells, which you are using in remote control. So what happened inside the cell, when you connect a bulb or a lamp, the lamp light up. But how the lamp light up, what is happening inside the cell? Inside the cell, there is a chemical present and there is a chemical reaction inside the cell. So whenever a chemical reaction produces energy, what we call that energy, we call that energy as a chemical energy. So whenever you have food, fuel, batteries, they all have chemical energy. Is it clear the concept of chemical energy? So as you can see here, the coal, the batteries, cells, they all have chemical energy. Even the food which we eat, that is also having a chemical energy. Why? Because the food which we eat, so inside our stomach, there is a chemical reaction take place with the food and then it releases the energy. So whenever a chemical reaction produces energy, we call that energy as a chemical energy. The second kind of energy, that's called kinetic energy. What is the meaning of kinetic? The term kinetic refers to moving. Anything which is moving is known as kinetic. So the energy which moving objects having, like anything which is moving, any kind of motion, like here you can see a sports car is moving on the track, so it will have a kinetic energy. A bus moving on the track or the road, that's also having a kinetic energy. So objects which are moving faster, they have greater kinetic energy. And objects, if two objects having the same mass, the one which is have, moving faster will have a greater kinetic energy. And the one which is moving slower will have smaller kinetic energy. So anything which is moving will have kinetic energy. Example, if you are walking, on the track the definition of kinetic energy the object the energy which moving objects having that is known as kinetic energy so energy how it can be produced it can be produced by different ways like example example in our body 
what we do we eat food so when we eat food what we have we have chemical energy in our body but as you, you use your legs move your legs and you move from one place to another so basically the chemical energy of the food is used as a kinetic energy same way inside the car so what we have inside the car we are using a fuel so there is a fuel present inside the car and fuel will have a chemical energy so when the car engine burns the fuel that chemical energy changes into kinetic energy so it can be produced by different ways but whenever the object is moving moving objects always have kinetic energy is it clear the concept of kinetic energy to everyone an object can have two forms of energy at the same time like example if this car is having a fuel so it is having a chemical energy and this car is moving as well so it is also having a kinetic energy so two forms of energy car may have two or more forms of energy at the same time then the third form of energy is called potential energy the energy which is stored in the object due to the change in the height or when object is raised to certain height it will store some energy and we call that energy as potential energy so example you have a box which is on the floor so this box is there on the floor and you lift this box from the floor to the shelf so whenever you lift an object you raise the object to certain height the object will store some of the energy whenever object lifted to certain height it will store energy and which form of energy this object will have it will have potential energy so the object stored energy due to the change in the height we refers to potential energy and greater the height greater the potential energy so if you have uh, two cases you are lifting the uh, object to different shelves one is the lower shelf another one you are lifting to a higher shelf both cases the object will store energy as a potential energy but which one a or b object will have high put greater potential energy like student a lifted the block to shelf a student b lifted the block to shelf b which case the block will have greater potential energy a or b the potential energy is the energy stored due to height yeah what about others abdullah khan saim shahzeb Hiba. so that's right b because it is raised to a greater height the height which is raised or move from the ground is higher that's why it will store greater potential energy so whenever objects are at certain height force and energy is a different thing energy when you are applying a force and you move the object to certain distance the object will store something and that we called as energy so ability to do work is known as energy so here as you can see this is a waterfall so which form of energy the water particles are having at the height which form of energy when they are at certain height above the ground so as they are at certain height above the ground so they will have potential energy but as this water is coming down because this water is falling 
so this water is moving as well at this point because the water is moving so it will have kinetic as well as well as it is already at certain height so it will have potential so it will have both kinetic and potential at this point because the water is at certain height above the ground and water is moving as well but when if it was not moving like example if we consider the water particle at this point which is which was example not moving so it will have only potential when it is coming down to position b it will have potential and kinetic but when it is on the ground only moving so it will have kinetic only is it clear the concept of potential energy same thing example a coconut is falling from the tree so when this coconut was there attached which form of energy it will have when it is attached and it is above the ground that is only potential that's good abdullah but when it is coming down and it's still it's above the ground so it will have potential as well as kinetic but when it just hit the ground it will transform to other forms light energy what is the concept of light energy anything which glow anything which emits light we call that is having a light energy example sun sun is producing or it's producing light because we are receiving light also and we are receiving heat also so anything which glow emit out light that will have light energy same thing sun is also producing heat so it is also having heat energy so when objects glow emit out light we call they have light energy thermal energy or we can also say heat energy the energy which is coming from the objects or hot objects we call that as a heat energy or thermal energy like example the sun sun is producing light also and it is also producing heat but this thermal energy or heat energy is basically divided into two categories heat energy can be thermal energy it can be internal energy what is the concept of internal energy internal energy means the total energy of the particles So the total energy of the particle is known as internal energy like you have an object which consists of particles say five particles are there and they have different energies this is having 2 joules 3 joules 4 joules this is 2 joules and again 3 joules so what is the meaning of uh, internal energy it is a total energy of the particle when we add the total energy of the particles for the material like first particle is having 2 joule the second particle is having 3 joule third particle is having 4 joule fourth particle is again 2 joule and fifth particle is having 3 joule so when we add this 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 4 9 
plus 2 11 and 11 plus 3 14. So that 14 joules, the total energy of the particles, that sum of energy of the particle, what we call, we call that as internal energy or we can also say heat energy because we, you can use the term internal or heat. But what is the meaning of thermal energy? The thermal energy means the change in the internal energy. So when the internal energy changes for the object, we call that as thermal energy. Example, three particles here for the same object, but initially the particle will having energy like 5 joule, 6 joule and 5 joule. And then it changes to 3 joules, 4 joules and 3 joules. So what is the internal energy before? At the start, what is the total internal energy? 5 joule, 6 joule and 5 joule. So 5 plus 5, 10 plus 6, 16 joule. So the total energy is 16 joule. What is the internal energy afterwards, after some time? 3 plus 4 plus 3, so that's make 10 joule. So what is the change in the internal energy? How much internal energy changes? That is 6. So the change in internal energy The change in the internal energy is called thermal energy. So how much change in internal energy occur? 6 joules. So we say the thermal energy is 6 joules. Is it clear the concept of thermal energy and internal energy? So when the object internal energy decreases, it will release the energy. And if internal energy increase, it will absorb the energy. So internal energy is the stored one. And thermal energy is what is transferred to the surrounding or from the surrounding. For example, we are burning a trash example. So when we are burning a trash, which form of energy it will have? It will have thermal energy or you can also say heat energy. Sound energy, what is the concept of sound energy when anything vibrate? It always produce sound, but like example, all the sounds are not audible because there is a frequency range, there is an audible range for our ear. All the sounds we cannot hear. There is an audible range. We can hear the sound which is producing 20 vibrations per second to 20,000 vibrations per second. This is the audible range for a normal human ear. For animals it vary, but for humans, the normal, because even for human ears, they have different audible range. It, it changes with the age, but for normal he, human ear, the audible range is from 20 vibration per second to 20,000 vibration per second. So any vibration within this range, our ear can detect. If it is less than 20,000, Oh, sorry, less than 20, we cannot hear. If it is more than 20,000, we cannot hear that vibration or we cannot hear that or record that sound. So example, if you take a pencil or a pen and you are vibrating this pen or pencil, can you hear the sound produced by this? If you have right now with you the pen or pencil, can you hear the sound? You're not able to hear the sound from that. Why you're not able to hear the sound? Because that vibration, it is vibrating, it is producing sound, but that is not in the 
audible range because the audible range is from 20 vibrations to 20000 vibrations that is what we can detect so anything which is vibrating produce sound but all the sounds are not detectable because of our limitations so if you have like example a loudspeaker cone what happen you can observe this motion when you play a music or you play any kind of sound so what this, what happened to the cone this cone is start to vibrate so when this cone is vibrating what it caused it caused the air particles because air particles are around the cone and it is also causing the air particles to vibrate and if it is producing a sound normally it is in an audible range so our ear can detect that sound is it clear the concept of sound energy any question or a doubt Sime, Heather, Basara, any question or a doubt? So whenever anything is vibrating, it will always produce sound energy. electrical energy what is the electrical energy energy due to the moving charges when the charges the particles and normally what are the charges moving in the wires in the wire we have electrons so energy due to the moving charges that energy is called electrical energy example uh, say this is a bulb a lamp this is a symbol for the lamp and you connect a battery which is having positive and negative terminal then you connect the wires the moment you connect the wire what you observe you observe that the lamp light up or lamp start to glow now basically what happened inside the cell or a battery there is a chemical reaction so which form of energy there inside the cell it will have chemical energy because there is a chemical energy as the chemical reaction take place inside the cell because of this chemical reaction what it produce it produce electrons due to a chemical reaction electrons are produced and what happened to these electron these electrons start to move so when these electrons start to flow in the wire which form of energy these electron carry they carry electrical energy and when these electron move through the lamp passes through the lamp they transfer their energy when these electron transfer their energy which form of energy lamp produce the lamp will produce a light energy so basically it's energy transform from one to form to another so whenever energy is there due to the moving charges, moving particle, what we call that energy, we call that as electrical energy. So inside the wires where the electrons are moving, flowing, we call they have electrical energy. Is it clear the concept of electrical energy? So basically energy changes from one form to another. First it was chemical inside the battery. There was chemical, a chemical reaction produce electron. So when these electrons start to move, they get elect, they have electrical. And when they start to flow and transfer energy to the lamp, the lamp light up. So it will convert into light energy. 
So energy transformed from one to another. Where electrical energy refers to energy in the moving particles. And when electrical energy is there, it also produces heat and light. The nuclear energy. The nuclear energy, the energy released from the nucleus of the atom, we call that as nuclear energy. As we already discussed in chemistry, the structure of an atom, an atom consists of nucleus. Inside the nucleus, we have neutron and proton. And around the nucleus, electrons are moving. In the definite region, what we call that region, we call that as shell. So, this is the nucleus. This one is called orbit. And around the nucleus electrons are there inside the nucleus neutron and proton so the energy released from nucleus of the atom the energy which is released only from this part we call that as a nuclear energy but how nuclear energy can be released it it can be released by two ways or it can be released by nuclear reactions and there are two nuclear reactions one is called fusion and another one is known as fission. So there are two ways by which we can release the nuclear energy. One is called fusion, another one is fission. What is the meaning of fusion? Fusion means when we join the lighter nuclei So when the lighter nuclei join, the, ener the nucleus release energy, <coughs> we call that as nuclear fusion. And when the heavy nucleus break down, it is opposite. So when the heavy nucleus break down and release energy, we call that as nuclear fission. Like example, you have two nuclei having one proton, one electron and another one also having one proton uh, one neutron and one electron. So when you combine them together, when you join them together, when you fuse them together, so when these two nucleus or atom join with each other, their nucleus will actually join and what will be the resultant nucleus when they join with each other? It will be two proton, two neutron and two electrons. So as you can see the smaller nuclei, the lighter nuclei join together and they form a heavy nucleus and it will release energy. So which form of energy they release? or which form of energy they have, they have a nuclear energy. An opposite will happen if we have a heavy nucleus. Heavy nucleus means having more, many particles. Electrons are also there, but I'm not drawing an electron because our main focus is the nucleus. So when we have lot of particle inside the nucleus, and we break down this nucleus 
or we hit this nucleus by elect neutron so that it will break into lighter nuclei smaller nuclei so when the heavy break down into lighter this type of nuclear reaction is known as nuclear fission reaction but when the lighter nuclei join to form a heavy this type of nuclear reaction is known as nuclear fusion reaction and nuclear fusion reaction it happen on sun or stars and nuclear fission reaction we do on, on different nuclear power stations how we break the nucleus we target the nucleus by the neutron so when we target the nucleus by the neutron this neutron break down the nucleus into two parts and a heavy nucleus split into two parts and release energy so this energy is released by a nuclear fission reaction is it clear the concept of two nuclear reactions fission and fusion yeah there are very small that's right but how we target so we take millions or trillions like we have an atom and we target this by millions or trillions of neutron and one of them is able to split them or break them into a lighter one so a nuclear energy the energy which is stored in the nucleus is called a nuclear energy which can be released by two ways nuclear fission and fusion so these nuclear bombs or hydrogen bombs they also use a nuclear reaction on the sun as well at the surface of the sun there is a nuclear reaction i'll share another link and continue this discussion of nuclear energy